let A be a positive number other than the number one itself. Then we define the logarithm base A, uh, which is denoted LOG, so we often call them logs for short, LOG sub A of X. So the log base A of X is the inverse function to the exponential function F of X equals A. And so these two functions are inverses of each other. So let me kind of, before we talk more about logarithms here, let me talk about uh, other inverse relationships we're familiar with. So let's say, for example, we had the expression, you know, X plus three equals five. We'll make it an equation here. If we wanted to solve the equation for X, what we think of is like, hmm, I gotta get rid of this plus three, but that plus three is attached to the X in some regard. And so the idea is I wanna move it to the other side so that X is isolated on the left-hand side. But how do you move plus three? Well, you apply the inverse operation to both sides. So you subtract three, subtract three. The inverse function has the property that addition by three followed by subtraction by three will give you nothing that is just addition by uh, zero won't do anything and so then the left hand uh, the left hand side will become x and the right hand side would look like five minus three which we can then simplify to make that computation so addition and subtraction are inverse operations of each other well what if we did something like three x is equal to five um, on, now on the left hand side the goal is still the same we want to move the three to the other side of the equation. We want to get x all by itself. But how do you move the three in this situation? We're still getting rid of the number three, but the three is attached to the variable x by a different operation this time. The operation in play is multiplication. So we will perform the inverse operation so that a, a multiplication by three cancels out with division by three. And that then gives us the solution x equals 5 thirds like there. And you can simplify the fraction if it were possible, but five thirds, uh, that's already in lowest terms there. Uh, let's try this one more time here. Uh, this time, let's consider the equation. We're going to take x cubed is equal to five. Or if you might like to, you think of it as like x caret three. You know, that, that's oftentimes how you write it on a calculator. There's some like a little caret or something here. That's the operation in play, the exponent. Well, you have x cubed is equal to five. The same idea is true for all three of these examples so far. If you want to solve for x, we got to move, we got to move the three to the other side. But we can't just magically woo -loo 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 -loo, make it, you know, disappear to the, and, and it reappear to this side. We have to perform some operation to both sides of the equation so that equality is preserved. And we have to apply the inverse operation. So if you're taking the power of three, the inverse operation, as we've learned before, would be the cube root for which we take the cube root of both sides and see that the solution ought to be x is equal to the cube root of five like so. And so that's how we see it in all of these, all of these different examples. If you have x plus three, you're gonna subtract three from both sides and end up with the solution of uh, two, five minus three. If you had three x, three times x, you're gonna divide both sides by three and get the solution five thirds. If you had x cubed, then you'll take the cube root of both sides and get the solution as x equals three-fifths. All right, now we're going to get to the heart of the matter, okay? If you had something like the following, if you had three to the x is equal to five, we still want to solve for x on the left-hand side. We got to get rid of the three. That is, we have to move the three to the other side of the equation. And how do we accomplish that? How do we move the three to the other side? Well, we have to perform the inverse operation, but this time the operation is not the power function x cubed. The operation is the exponential function base three. And so to move three to the side, we have to apply the inverse operation, which in this context, the inverse operation would be the log base three of both sides. And so upon doing that, the log base three cancels with the, the, the exponential base three, then you end up with x is equal to the log base three of five. And so that's what logarithms are. They're the inverse operations to exponentials. If you wanna move a plus three, you subtract three from both sides. If you wanna move a times three, you divide both sides by three. If you wanna move a power three, you take the radical uh, three each time. If you wanna move the exponential base three, you'll take the logarithm base three. And that's the pattern that we see over and over and over again when you work with these equations. We have to move the number to the other side to solve for x. And we do that by applying the inverse operation. 
Therefore, if we have an expression like a function like f of x equals 2 to the x, its inverse function would be the natural log, or excuse me, the, the log base 2 of x. The natural log is something we'll talk about later. And so if you had like 2 of x, 2, 2 to the x equals 5, then the solution to that equation would be log base 2 of 5. Uh, but conversely, if your function itself is a logarithm, let's say g of x equals the log base 7 of x, then its inverse function will be 7 to the x. And so if you had like log base 7 of x is equal to 2, right, then you want to move the base 7 to the other side, and you would get that the solution to the equation will be 7 squared. Uh, we'll talk some more about that here on this slide, which when, we're, when you're working with a logarithmic uh, or an exponential equation, we often refer to these logarithmic forms and exponential forms. That is, you look at these two equations right here. These two equations are equivalent. They have the same solution set. But this version right here is the so-called logarithmic form of the equation. And this equation right here is the same as what we call the exponential form. And this is something we do all the time. Like we said earlier, x plus 3 equals 5. This is the addition form, x equals 5 minus 3. That's the subtraction form of that equation. Uh, another example, we had 3x equals 5. This is the multiplication form of the equation. And then you can move multiplication to the other side by division. You get the division form of the equation. All right, one more. If you have x cubed equals 5, this is the power version of the equation. Or you have x equals the cube root of 5, this is the radical version of the equation. We can do the same thing with logarithms and exponential forms. It's important to be able to convert back and forth between them as if we were translating one language, like from Spanish to French or something like that. So imagine we have the following uh, exponential statement. Let's say that we have 2 cubed is equal to 8. Uh, so this is a exponential expression and maybe we want to move base 2 to the other side of the equation. If we did that, the corresponding exponential, uh, excuse me, the, the corresponding logarithmic form would look like 3 is equal to the log base 2 of 8. So you'll notice that it's the base 2 that moves to the other side. The base 2 started on the left hand side, then it moves to the right hand side. On the other hand, the 3 didn't move, it stayed on the left hand side. And the 8 doesn't move, it stays on the right hand side. It's the base 2 that seemed to move from, from the left over here to the right. Uh, let's do another example, but let's start with the logarithmic form this time. If we take log base 2 of 1 eighth, this is equal to negative 3. Why is that? Well, if you're not convinced that the statement is true, we could consider what happens if we move the base 2 to the other side. If we move the base 2 to the other side, you're going to get 1 eighth is equal to 2 to the negative 3. And remember, by exponent laws, a negative exponent means to take reciprocals and 2 cubed is 8. So this exponential expression, this exponential form is probably more like our native language, all right? This, this makes sense to us. This is how exponents work. Well, this statement in exponential form is true only if this logarithmic statement is likewise true. So the log base 2 of 1 eighth is equal to negative 3 because 2 to the negative 3 is equal to 1 eighth. Uh, let's look at one more example of this. Uh, let's take the log, uh, the log base 5 of 25. That is equal to 2. Why is that? Well, again, if you want to think of it like moving the base 5 to the other side, if you move the base 5, you're going to end up with 25 is equal to 5 squared, which is, again, a statement. This exponential statement is one we're all going to probably agree with, right? 5 times 5 is equal to 25. Now, because 5 squared is equal to 25, this means the log base 5 of 25 equals 2. Essentially, when you're working with logarithms, you're trying to answer the following question. If I have my base and I have my operand right here, the argument of the logarithm, ba log base 5 of 25, you kind of erase this number, right? Uh, that's kind of like erasing this number right here. And so you're asking yourself, what power, hmm, what power of 5 gives you 25? That's what the logarithm is trying to compute. What power of 5 gives you 25? Well, surprise, it's 2. Right? What power of 2 gives you 1 eighth? It's negative 3. What power of 2 gives you 8? It's 3. The logarithm is the power. This right here is the logarithm. The logarithm is the power. That's what it's trying to compute. The logarithm is the power.